Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is a prophecy report entitled, The Flag of Righteousness. Concerning the moral rot in America in the Biden administration on May 30th, it was reported that Uganda has passed some very strong anti-gay laws, and Biden has responded by threatening to impose sanctions and other penalties on Uganda, calling for the laws to be immediately repealed calling the laws a shameful act and an alarming trend of human rights abuses and corruption, calling the laws a threat to everyone living in Uganda, and threatening to ban Ugandans from entering the U.S. The next day, it was reported that hundreds of Ugandans marched in the street in support of their government and carrying signs with slogans such as, We don't want America's pro-gay money. We love our country more than money. Down with Babylon, up with hope. This is our country, and the law will shield our morals, values, and culture. And, for God and country, let the flag of righteousness be lifted. These days, the flag of righteousness seems to be flying higher in most of Uganda than in most of America. And the morals of the black government of Uganda and some of their church members seem to be higher than the morals of the white government of America and some of America's church members. Now righteousness is a matter of one's relationship with God, not a matter of race. Uganda's government has its right, but it is sorely lacking in the government of the United States. Here are more events that recently made the news. Concerning Israel's prosperity at the end of the age, having silver and gold, cattle and goods, on May 31st, Israel announced the discovery of more natural gas off her Mediterranean coast. The field is estimated to have 68 billion cubic meters of gas, which is more than five times the total amount all Israel uses in a year. Concerning famine on June 1st, Leo Holman reported that agricultural and environmental ministers from 13 nations uh, the U.S., Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Burkina Faso, Chile, Czech Republic, Ecuador, Germany, Panama, Peru, and Spain have signed on to an agreement to put restrictions on farmers to reduce emissions of methane gas. The U.N. Food and Agricultural Organization, World Bank, and other globalist groups have been warning about a coming famine for months, but they are more focused on reducing methane than increasing food production. It is common knowledge that the globalists want to drastically reduce the population of the earth, and three ways to do that are war, famine, and plagues. John Kerry, America's climate czar, is excited about taking farmland out of production, limiting the number of cows farmers and ranchers can raise, and billions are investing facilities to produce lab-grown meat insect larvae, mealworms, and crickets. This is real. It is coming to the whole world soon, and these people and groups say they must do this to save the planet. On May 30th, it was reported that a woman in the Netherlands said, quote, having a family is against my climate principles. A child is super polluting. Just think of how many diapers you use. She is being praised for getting an abortion to save the planet. On June 2nd, it was reported that an activist in Chicago are demanding that the shootings be treated as a public health crisis. If the WHO is given power to control everyone's life during a perceived crisis, then climate change, violence, and opposition to their agendas, and many other issues, will be treated as a perceived health crisis, and the government's control over people will continue until the second coming. Concerning great wickedness on the earth during the tribulation period, the executive board of the WHO has 34 members. On May 31st, it was reported that a member from North Korea will serve on the WHO board for the next three years. North Korea is a nuclear-armed communist nation that reportedly starves its citizens, operates prison camps, executes citizens for political dissent, arbitrarily detain citizens without legal representation and more. It is mind-boggling that world leaders would give global power 
to someone from North Korea. Concerning world government and climate change, according to data and research group called Carsmetric, there were 1.45 billion cars in the world in November 2022. And if nothing changes, that number will increase to 2.1 billion by 2050. On June 6th, it was reported that the World Economic Forum wants the number of cars on Earth to be limited to 500 million in 2050 to reduce carbon emissions. This will require more people to use public transportation, share a vehicle, ride a bicycle, or walk. They also want to force vehicle owners to replace their gas-powered vehicles with electric vehicles, and most people will not be able to afford those. Excuse me, I slipped. Most won't be here because of the population reduction, and those that are will own nothing and be happy. Concerning deceit, on June 6th, Tucker Carlson posted an 11-minute video on Twitter, and almost 70 million people watched it in the next few hours. Gary Bauer, the Campaign for Working Families, watched it and said Carlson's overarching theme was, we are being lied to 24 hours a day, seven days a week, about virtually everything. Finally, are you rapture ready?